Hey y'all, John here. It's been a long while, but I want to give a final review on this knife here, the Stretch 2 K390. Um, you know, this knife kind of broke me uh, as far as the knife hobby goes. And, you know, along with the economy we're living in and everything, it, it's, but you know, this knife is the primary culprit here. You know, the last two videos I made, we talked a lot about the K390 and the rust resistance well as you can see i've gotten it to rust um everything black you see on there that was orange rust at one point and um i really started neglecting this knife but i've been carrying it for almost two years straight now and that's how this knife broke me was i can't stop carrying this thing the k390 along with the design of this knife it's just such a phenomenal package um, and value for the price these are still selling at. This might be the best high performance, uh, you know, knife deal out there, value wise. Like, the value, like, what do you get for your money? Um, I don't want this to be too long, but we'll start with the the corrosion resistance since that's what the other videos were mainly about and then we'll cover the rest of the knife uh, quickly um, the k390 continued to be excellent in corrosion resistance here on the coast in florida but i really wanted to see what it took to get it to rust and what it took was i did a full detox on it again because i wasn't convinced that i got all the edci off like we talked about before from the previous owner and um, it didn't make a difference again um, I just went back to my normal routine so what I did was I started neglecting it um, completely and um, I started getting a really good patina after cutting acid based things you know lots of citrus meats and I don't really use my folding pocket knives for food but I just wanted to see and it still just kind of patinas up really nice. And I couldn't get like orange rust on the blade, which I was kind of surprised by. Because, I mean, I, I live 100 yards from the ocean. So um, I'm really shocked by it. Everything else around me where I'm standing right now just rusts. Um, but the K390 didn't, you know. Um, what it took was I was cutting some nylon webbing that was buried on the shoreline of a saltwater bay uh, not to give anything away where I live or anything but saltwater bay in Florida and had a lot of this nylon webbing hundreds of yards of it that had to be cut before it could be dug up and it was salty and sandy and disgusting and I just cut and cut and cut and cut all day and a few things happened I fell more in love with K390 because it did not get dull Whereas um, I've done the same task with S30V in the past and it got dull within, you know, let's just say if I cut 500 feet of this sandy, salty material, the S30V would be begging for mercy after 50 feet. This uh, would still cut paper after the entire job and let's say it was 500 feet. So we're talking over tenfold over S30V from what I've noticed in real world, like day-to-day -day cutting it also the edge stability like i've talked about before on the k390 held up fantastic to grit and sand particles and things like that that you know that stuff i notice when it's embedded in like fibrous materials like nylon webbing and stuff will really dull out a knife quickly um not the k390 i didn't have to put this knife on any stones after that task which i was amazed by because as i said it's destroyed every other knife or blade I've ever used to do that with. So awesome. But I didn't bother cleaning the blade after that. And I just kind of put it, I wiped it off on my pant legs and I just put it away um, wet with salt water. And that got some orange rust on it overnight, but it took overnight. And um, I just kept going. I said, you know what? I wiped it off again and I just kept going and everything I did I just wanted to see how much orange rust I could get on before it started pitting, causing damage to the blade, and um, just started really neglecting this thing for a few months. And uh, everywhere you see that dark black staining was a good amount of orange rust. 
but it was all just surfaced rust. I mean, it all came off when I needed it to come off, and the patina is looking really cool on this knife now. Um, it's definitely went to this dull gray with the black. So, love the way it looks, but, um, I, you know, I had, like I said, I had to really neglect the knife to get it to rust. So, I'm in love with the K390 with all the performance. I mean, this has been in my pocket now for... Yeah, it has been uh, over two years. I'm sorry. Uh, November will be two and a half years. So, um, and I haven't felt the need to go out and buy another knife. I haven't felt the need to grab any of my other knives. In fact, I just grab this all the time. I can't stop grabbing this knife. I just grab it. Um, it's freaking fantastic. It really is. Especially if you like four finger choils. Um, this is a little more robust than like an Andela, uh, which is a great knife, but I like a finger choil. I like a little bit beefier build like this one has. So I appreciate this knife. It's kind of like an FRN uh, PM2. It's very similar to a PM2, but um, so it's just such a great knife. I don't think you can beat any of the K390 series for the price. Um, I am thinking about picking up an Andela because it's almost a full ounce lighter than this and I'm kind of um, experimenting with just lighter weight in the pocket. You know, especially with this steel, I'm finding I don't really need like the slightly more robust blade to get the same tasks done, but I will miss that finger choil and the ergonomics of this thing. So I haven't pulled the trigger on that yet, but dollar for dollar, man, this thing is just wicked. It is wicked. Um, I just carry it every day. I, I really do carry it every day and very rarely needs to sharpen. And K390 is not that hard to sharpen. And I beat the crap out of this thing. And now that I've got over that fear of rusting it, I don't worry about this knife. I don't think about it. I don't leave salt water just sitting on it anymore. That was, you know, just an experiment. But aside from that, this thing just, I beat the crap out of this thing and really treat it. If I treated anybody, I know the way I treat this knife, you know, they'd never talk to me again. So, and this thing just shows up every day, ready to work, ready to cut. Now, there are a couple cons to this knife. It's not perfect. Um, one, I live coastal, lots of sand, and it's gritty. Like, the action does not stay smooth. You can, maybe you can hear. Probably not, but there's a permanent grit inside of it at all times because of where I'm at and what I use it for. So that's a con for me, may not be a con for you, but I don't even think about it. I just use it and I just live with the grit. You know, the action's not flickable and it's not the most smooth and I can feel the grit and it crunches and stuff, but it's not impeding the use of the knife. I, I, I just, it's a tool. You know, all these knives are tools at the end of the day. So, you know, just, I've really, this knife has really reminded me of that because I have stopped drooling all over all these new releases and all the latest craze. And I've really, really, really backed out of the knife world in that respect because at the end of the day, they're tools and what a phenomenal tool this is. So it gets gritty in it. I've taken it apart a couple of times to clean that out. That's the second con. If you've taken apart any of these FRN knives with the back, back locks, holy crap. What a freaking pain in the butt to get these things back together. Um, I won't dive into the details. There's tons of videos online showing you how much of a pain in the butt they are. But I thought for sure I would, you know, I, you know, my, me, I would be fine and it would go right back together. No, no matter how capable and smart you think you are, these things are a pain in the butt to put back together because of the way the design is. Um, you almost need a third hand legitimately uh, to get these back together. But I get it. I got it back together both times. I mean, so, but that's why I stopped worrying about the grit inside was it's just not worth, it's not worth it. Um, other cons, the weight is a little heavy. Um, it's listed as 3.6, 3.7 ounces online. I've weighed it and I think it comes out at 3.58 on my scale at home. Um, so I don't know. Um, the deep carry clip is a must for any Spyderco, really. That's just a given, I think. But 
yeah so weight it's a little heavier for an frn knife so like if you're not attached to finger choils i think because of the performance of the steel you don't necessarily need that thicker blade stock if you're using it for outdoor work i think it'd be just fine with the indella and save some weight and a little slimmer in the pocket which is cool and appealing but the stretch too if the weight doesn't bother you uh yeah i just can't think of anything that beats this for the price so i'm kind of gushing at this point um, I think a PM2, I still love the PM2, but I haven't been carrying mine much. Every once in a while, I'll take it out for a day, just for nostalgia's sake. But um, this thing's in my pocket every day. I don't even carry my militaries very much anymore. I, I just grab this thing and go, and it's always sharp. It's always a laser and a screamer, and I haven't found a task that will dull it in a single sitting yet. So... Um, it's it's awesome you know in that respect so it's great get one if you're thinking about it yeah like i said it's broke me i don't really know what to get excited about in the knife world anymore you know there's a few designs i love the native five everyone's gaga over magna cut right now i just don't see i'm not it's not lighting my pants on fire the knife world and the prices and the designs and everything like I feel like Spyderco's already made the best designs that can be made. Native 5, this knife, PM2, Military, um, the Sage series. I mean, freaking, can you design better ergonomics and, and engineering in a design? I don't know. Um, blade geometries, heat treatments, like Spyderco just, I feel like they've already nailed the best you need. There's always going to be a crazier steel and everything, but man... K390 hits these extremes, but it's still really easy to live with day to day. I just, it blows my mind. It's broken me as a hobbyist, but really, really, really satisfied me as a user. Uh, so, and, and I've saved a lot of money, not just burning through knives, trying different things, looking for the next best thing. You know, I love crew wear and I love the military, so I may have to pick up that new one. But other than that, y'all, there... I mean, I could gush over this knife for another 15 minutes, but that's it. It's great. The ergonomics are fantastic. It's an awesome knife. So uh, get one if you're thinking about it. Um, I got nothing else to say. Hit some questions in in the comments. Uh, yeah, K390 is just the bomb. So rock on.